I am Dr. Rahul Kaushik and today we are going to cover our fourth unit topic and it is industrial production estimation and utilization of the phyto constraints. Here we have around 10 phyto constraints and today we are going to discuss about the phyto constraint force colon. Force colon if you uh, if you are looking at the uh, uh, screen, you can see that force choline is a labdane diterpene and it is isolated from the roots of coleus force coli wild brick and the plant belongs to the family of the mint and tulsi and that is labiati or lemiaci family. If you look at the structure of force choline, you can see that it is a diterpene. So, Force choline is a labdane diterpene. The name labdane is used because uh, such phytoconstant, the phytoconstants with such structures were first isolated from labdanum. Labdanum is a resin which is derived from the gum rock rose of plant Cistus maculatus. So, here today we are going to cover our first topic uh, force choline. If we look at the geographical distribution of our phytoconstant coleus force coli, we can uh, you can see that it is a native of Indian subcontinent. So, it means that in the Indian subcontinent it is widely found. Indian subcontinent includes your India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and even Maldives also. So, it is widely found in these countries. Since we are uh, we are concerned about the uh, isolation of phytoconstraints, so here it is very important to mention that uh, uh, the solubility of uh, the phytoconstraint. So, we can see that uh, uh, the compound force choline it is soluble in uh, the solvents like uh, ethanol, chloroform and DMSO. DMSO is here uh, dimethyl sulfoxide. If we talk about the uses of uh, our compound uh, force choline, we can see that it is an excellent antioxidant. It is also used in chronic heart failure, it is also used in glaucoma, asthma and even in cancer also. One more important thing here to mention that uh, if, you, if you see the structure of force choline, so these are the polyhydroxy compounds and due to these OH groups your uh, your compound force choline is acting as anti, uh, antioxidant a potent antioxidant drug. So, a potent antioxidant drug is having beneficial effect in all kind of uh, diseases uh, be it asthma be it glaucoma or be it cancer. So, moving on to the next slide if you see the structure here this is the fresh plantation of fresh plantation of our uh, uh, coleus force coli and there are various varieties of coleus force coli available in the nature and this variety which is having green color leaves is coleus force coli and it is the roots of this plant are used for estimation or so for production of our phytoconstant force coli if you see the structure in the uh, uh, picture in the second slide you can see that the uprooted there are uprooted uh, uh, plants of uh, coleus force coli and these tuberous roots they are used for uh, for the production of our phytoconstant force coli these roots uh, they are dried under direct sunlight and if you you can see in the picture also that there are there are uh, farmers they are engaged in isolating the cellular debris or the foreign organic matter or uh, uh, other debris from the uh, from your dried tubers or dry tuberous roots of your uh, coleus force coli roots. If we move on to the mechanism of action, since here we are concerned about the phytoconstraint, so uh, likewise as we study in the medicinal chemistry, as we study in the phyto uh, in the pharmacology, here also we have to uh, mention the uh, mechanism of action with which this phytoconstant is going to act in your body. So, 
uh, you can see in the picture that uh, uh, the force choline when it enters into your body it binds to the enzyme adenylate cyclase this enzyme is available on your cell membrane this adenylate cyclase when it gets activated it causes the conversion of adenosine triphosphate ATP into cyclic adenosine monophosphate so uh, activation of adenylate cyclase with the attachment of force choline it causes the conversion of ATP into CAMP cyclic adenosine monophosphate simultaneously there is another conversion which is guanosine triphosphate is, is being converted into guanosine diphosphate so these conversions cause the accumulation of CAMP in inside your cell and this accumulation of uh, uh, cyclic AMP is having a beneficial effect on your body so the uh, the beneficial effect in the diseases like glaucoma psoriasis asthma heart failure obesity and cancer so accumulation of cyclic AMP inside your cell is having beneficial effect on the uh, on, on on your body so this is the mechanism of action with which your phytoconstant force choline is going to act on your body moving on to our next slide this is the important part of our uh, study here we will study about the production techniques so as we have already uh, seen that uh, uh, this force choline is isolated from the tuberous roots of uh, coleus force coli so here we took the uh, tuberous roots of force coli and it is washed and dried and normally in the market it is available in the dried form this these dried tuber tuberous roots of uh, coleus force coli they are pulverized into small granules and the granules should be such that uh, they should not be in the form of fine powder because it may it might interfere with the uh, isolation procedures so this for, uh, force coli uh, coleus force coli uh, powder granules they are extracted in the crude form using methanol as solvent using our soxlet apparatus we will be covering the functioning of soxlet apparatus in the coming slide so this is the important apparatus we use for separation and isolation and extraction of our crude drug uh, it is very important here to mention that uh, since the our compound is soluble in methanol dmso chloroform so we uh, here we have you here we have utilized our uh, the solvents which uh, uh, in which the force choline is quite soluble so the methanolic extract we obtained after soxalation it is then concentrated under uh, rotary vacuum evaporator and the functioning of rotary vacuum evaporator we will be covering it in the, our next slide and this extract uh, this uh, uh, concentrated methanolic extract uh, which uh, which is converted into a dried residue uh, to this dried residue we add some uh, chloroform and we have to dissolve the uh, methanolic extract into the chloroform after the dissolving uh, after dissolving the uh, extract in the chloroform we take the uh, solution into a separating funnel and in this separating funnel equal volumes of water is added and the mixture is shaken well so what happens here we have taken the uh, residue we have dissolved the residue in the chloroform and we have taken the uh, solution of residue in chloroform into the separating funnel where we have added equal volume suppose we have taken 150 ml of uh, chloroform and uh, so we have to take 150 ml of water and we have to shake the mixture well moving on to our next slide uh, after shaking well the mixture is allowed to stand for some time and the chloroform layer here the chloroform layer it settles down being heavier than water the chloroform layer it settles down from where you can uh, you can isolate the chloroform layer from the water layer and uh, this step of uh, uh, shaking with water or you can simply say uh, washing with water it is then repeated again and again for several times uh, normally we uh, we wash with water two to three times repeat the water treatment two to three times and collect the chloroform layer every time the chloroform layer which is we settle down at the uh, 
bottom of the separating funnel. These fractions of uh, chloroform, these are then combined. Uh, the combined fraction of chloroform, it is then uh, precipitated using ice cold N-hexane. We have to uh, put the uh, chloroform extract, concentrated chloroform extract into the cold bath of N-hexane from where a reddish brown to brown colored powder of forscolene was obtained. This is crude forscolene which we have obtained as reddish brown or brown color powder. So, th from this crude forscolene we have to isolate our pure purified or white crystals of pure forscolene and this can be done using column chromatography. Moving on to the next slide, here uh, we have uh, in, in the previous slides we have uh, mentioned about the Soxalate apparatus, here we can see the functioning of Soxalate apparatus. You can see here it is composed of three parts, this is the reservoir, reservoir which contains the solvent in which we have to perform the isolation. This is the extractor assembly where we have to put our drug. Normally, we put our drug in the form of a thimble and the thimble is made up of uh, uh, cellulose uh, uh, filter paper. We have to make a packet of that sample and we have to put the sample here in the extractor. And there is another part of this Soxlet apparatus, it is condenser. So, condenser is applied with supplied with cold water. This is cold water entry and the hot water it exit from the upper side. So, what is happening here? You can see in this slide that solvent is getting evaporated, it enters the extractor through this side tube and as soon as the uh, solvent it enters the uh, extractor, it tries to escape, it tries to escape from uh, through the condenser and as soon as it reaches the condenser due to the cold water inlet, due to the cold water inlet, it gets uh, condensed and it fall on the thimble, this is thimble, this is drug, it falls on the drug and uh, repeated falling of uh, solvent on the drug, it causes extraction of our phytoconstraints. So, in this way after uh, accumulation of uh, solvent in this extractor up to this height, there is a term called sif uh, siphoning. This is the siphon tube, through this siphon tube our solvent which is uh, getting uh, concentrated at this place, it is it transferred back into the reservoir. So, again and again this process uh, continues and normally uh, 1 to 2 hours is the minimum uh, time for uh, uh, soxalation of your drug. This is the soxalate apparatus. If we move to our next assembly, it is separating funnel. This is a uh, assembly uh, using which we can separate the two immiscible, uh, two immiscible liquids on the basis of their solubility. So, here uh, the drug uh, suppose we have to uh, we have to isolate a non-polar drug from a polar solvent into a non-polar solvent. So here we can use the separating funnel where the polar uh, non-polar solvent it gets migrated it gets migrated into the polar non-polar solvent. So this is the uh, uh, functioning of separating funnel uh, we have used in the uh, isolation part. So moving on to our next. Uh, apparatus, this is the rotary vacuum evaporator. What happens here in this apparatus, we have this round bottom flask, and this is provided with uh, a hot water or hot bath, you can say hot bath, water bath you can say. So, this, uh, this water bath will provide you the heat uh, to the sample. So, this, uh, uh, this apparatus is used to concentrate those phytochemicals or those extracts which are generally thermolabile or which are heat sensitive. What happens? We put the uh, 
uh, water here in this and the vapor, water vapors they heat this uh, round bottom flask which is containing our extract and this round bottom flask is rotating it rotates this round bottom flask is rotating and uh, rotation of this round bottom flask uh, causes the uniform distribution of heat throughout this round bottom flask and the solvent vapors they get uh, evaporated very fast simultaneously we we are also applying uh, we are also applying a vacuum vacuum is also simultaneously applied which causes frequent and rapid evaporation of your solvent to the uh, solvent from the extract and as soon as the solvent vapors they 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 evaporates they get they are uh, they moves to this uh, they moves to this condenser assembly which is also fitted with the vacuum come condenser assembly and here it attaches the drops they uh, attaches to the cold surface of condenser and they get condensed and as soon as they get condensed they are collected by this collector. So, this assembly is uh, very uh, helpful for uh, separating or for isolating those phytoconstants which are thermolabile or which are sensitive to the heat. So, uh, using this technique we we have uh, we have achieved two uh, motos first we have saved our phytoconstant and secondly the the solvent which we have collected this solvent we have collected it can be reused. So, this assembly is uh, uh, not only efficient, it is also economic. Uh, the, uh, since we are concerned about the pure compound fire, uh, force choline, so we should know about the properties of our phytoconstant, uh, how the, the phytoconstant look alike and what are the physical properties of uh, this uh, phytoconstant. If you see the melting point of a force choline. Uh, it, it has got a melting point of 228 to 232 degree Celsius and in the pictures you can see you can see this is the raw powder of coleus force coli which we have used for isolation. This is the brown or light brown colored uh, crude force choline which we have isolated using our uh, production technique and this is the purified crystals of force choline. So, this in this way you have you you will achieve your uh, uh, purified or final product after column chromatography. This is the final purified force choline which we utilize for medicinal purposes. Uh, it has got a melting point of 520 degrees centigrade. The solubility as we have already discussed it is soluble in DMSO and the DMSO solubility is around 5 mg of uh, your uh, compound force choline it is soluble per ml of your DMSO. 5 mg of force choline can be dissolved in 1 ml of DMSO and the solution it is stable for at least 6 months at room temperature. So, it is very interesting to uh, to know here that our phytoconstant it is uh, it is uh, it, it is stable uh, for up to 6 months if we dissolve it in DMSO. Uh, density the uh, force coolant it is heavier than water it has got a density of 1.23 storage temperature is around point, uh, minus 20 degree Celsius, minus 20 degree Celsius for purified powder of this requires purified force choline requires minus 20 degree Celsius temperature for storing and it occurs in the form of white crystalline powder, white to off white uh, powder and uh, water solubility if we uh, it is generally insoluble in water. Uh, but it is soluble in DMSO as we have already discussed. It is also soluble in ethanol, but it is insoluble in water. Then we have lambda max. Lambda max is the wavelength at which lambda max is the wavelength at which our phytoconstant shows the maximum absorbance under UV radiations. So this is these are the physical properties of force choline. Moving on to the estimation part or the analysis part, we have got certain techniques like TLC thin layer chromatography, high pressure liquid chromatography, HPLC and HPTLC. So, these are the techniques with which we can uh, with which we can uh, estimate or analyze our phytoconstant in the drug samples. Taking one to one, uh, 
if we if we look at the TLC thin layer chromatography mostly we have done the thin layer chromatography in our labs also what we use here we prepare the uh, thin plate on uh, glass slide of uh, silica gel the uh, stationary phase is silica gel here also we have used the silica gel as a stationary phase but the the plates they are uh, uh, they are pre coated plates we have used and here 60 means for the mesh size from which the silica gel is uh, sieved from and f is the fluorescent agent which shows fluorescence at 254 nanometer of uv uh, wavelength mobile phase we have used here is benzene and methanol in the ratio of 9 is to 1 volume by volume we have taken the solvents as mobile phase and we have uh, prepared the uh, our plate uh, we, we have used uh, pre coated silica gel plates we can also prepare in the labs also but here we have used the pre coated silica gel plates and we have used the mobile phase benzene methanol in the ratio of 9 is to 1 flow rate is not applicable here for tlc it is for hplc if we look at the uh, detection detection uh, of our tlc sample uh, we have detected the compound at 366 nanometers 366 nanometers under long wavelength ultraviolet radiations we have uh, detected our compound we have uh, visualized our compound and it was found to be present at RA value of 0.25 so at 0.25 RA value we have detected our phyto our phyto constant uh, force colon in the chromatogram then sample we have prepared for TLC is 1 mg of drug we have taken and we have dissolved it in 50 ml of methanol and the sample was spotted on the uh, our uh, TLC plate. Similarly, we have prepared the standard here we have uh, used 1 mg of pure force choline pure force choline standard we have used and we have uh, dissolved in it uh, 25 ml of methanol and we have uh, put the sample uh, spot on the TLC plate. So, in this way we have performed our TLC and we have got the RA value uh, under these conditions we have got the RA value at 0.25 RF value retention factor RF stands for retention factor. Okay. Then we have another technique which is called HPLC here we have used the high Q which is a brand name brand name of the column silica gel column C 18 octyle silane C 8 C 8 means we have used a column which is made up of silica and uh, a polymer which is having 8 number of carbon atom in it. So, it is a, a silica gel which is coated with the C 8 or uh, octa, uh, octyle, uh, octyle silane polymer and in this way we have the uh, um, non polar stationary phase and the polar mobile phase we have used uh, the, uh, the uh, the silica gel it is it is packed in such a way that the pore size is around 5 micrometer here we have for hplc we have utilized acetonitrile water with these are polar solvents uh, in the ratio of 1 is to 1 and the ph of this uh, mixture is uh, uh, is set at uh, uh, 3 with the using formic acid the flow rate here for the column we uh, we have maintained 1 ml per minute 20 microliter injection we have used for hplc if we look at the uh, detector we have detected the hplc we have set the detector of hplc uv detector of hplc at 210 nanometer at which we can perform our isolation or detection of our phyto constant force choline uh, under these conditions we have got the uh, retention factor or uh, retention time here in HPLC we, we talk about retention time we have got a retention time of 12.4 minute it means that after injection of your sample into the column your, com uh, your column uh, is detected on the chromatogram after 12.4 minutes the sample here we have prepared by dissolving 1 mg of drug in 50 ml of mobile phase and one uh, standard is also prepared by dissolving 1 mg of your drug in 50 ml of mobile phase so this uh, under these conditions we got the uh, retention time of our for our compound uh, force choline at 12.4 minutes uh, 
Then we have another technique for HPTLC analysis of uh, uh, force collision. It is very similar to the uh, generally uh, used uh, thin layer chromatography. Here we have used automation. Each and every step is automated. Here we have uh, applied the sample automatically. We have saturated the chamber automatically. All the things they are uh, done automatically. So what we have done? We have used the automated TLC applicator, we have Kamag twin trough glass chamber and we have used TLC scanner, Kamag scanner and Kamag WinCAT software. Then we have used a, a stationary phase here pre coated silica gel we, uh, plates we have used, HPTLC plates we have used and we have used nitrogen gas for spotting the sample on the TLC plate, automatically CR TLC samples they are uh, being applied on the plate. Toline ethyl acetate methanol in the ratio of 9, 3, 0.05 volume by volume. We have utilized the mobile phase for this uh, separation. TLC, uh, TLC chamber was saturated for around 10 minutes and total run time for is about 25 minutes at room temperature which is 27 degree plus minus 2 degree Celsius. Mobile phase we have uh, run about uh, to a distance of 8 centimeter from the point of application. The derivatizing reagent we have used is aniseldehyde sulfuric acid reagent. Derivatization is generally uh, done for those compounds or those phytochemicals which get separated on the chromatogram but they do not, uh, uh, but they cannot be visualized using naked eye. So, we, deriv uh, we, we make derivatives of the isolated spots on the chromatogram itself and we uh, we visualize the developed uh, the derivatives of those uh, isolated spots and uh, in this way if you if you see the uh, tlc chromatogram this is the chromatogram at 366 nanometer derivatized plate it is and you can see the force collision it is getting uh, detected at here these are the standard and this is the standard iso force collision and you can see that this uh, uh, force collision is detected in the all the sample spots which are placed here. If we look the uh, our plate into the uh, normal light, you can see that the this force collision is also detected in our drug samples. So, in this way we can estimate or we can analyze the drug in our crude sample. We have uh, what we have done, we have isolated the sample, we have iso after isolation we have uh, we have confirmed the uh, identity using uh, physical properties and after that we have confirmed the uh, uh, confirmed the uh, identity using these sophisticated modern techniques like uh, TLC, HPLC and HPTLC. Moving on to our next slide, this is utilization of force collision. Here we can see that uh, uh, force collision it is utilized for management of heart related disorders like uh, uh, high BP, angina, respiratory illnesses like asthma. Force collision drops they are used for treatment of glaucoma. Force collision is also uh, used for management of conditions like allergies, eczema, psoriasis and uh, uh, painful menstrual periods, u urinary tract infections. It is also used in cancer treatment, sexual problems, insomnia and in convulsions also. Uh, nowadays force collision is being utilized as a sports nutrition in the form of nutraceuticals and it is also used in the treatment of obesity and as a dietary supplement. So, this is all about our compound force collision. In our next slide, we are going to cover uh, we are going to cover our next topic which is artemisinin. Artemisinin is our next phytoconstant. Thank you so much.